So in Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, much like Castlevania Symphony of the Night before it, you can get good endings and you can get bad endings. Now if you just go to the Hall of Termination, this is the end game area, and just go and fight Jeebel without doing anything to prepare, you're going to get a bad ending. Basically, if you go and fight him the minute you get access to the Hall of Termination, then nothing good's going to happen. You're just going to get a bad ending, and to make it really obvious that it's the bad ending and the wrong thing to do, you get a big game over at the end of it. So obviously, this is not the regular ending. If you want to get the good ending, the real ending, you're going to need to do a whole hell of a lot more at this point. I'm interested in this. Now, for this video, I'm not going to start at the very beginning. I'm going to start from the Hall of Termination, like when you get access to that area, and then move on from there. Basically, I'm going to start from the point where you can fight Jeebel. The game is fairly straightforward up to that point anyway, so this is really where it kind of opens up and some of the directions you need to go are a little less clear. So I figure this is a good starting point, and it makes sense because this is when you're going to get the bad ending if you just go and fight him. And you might get that and just think to yourself, what the hell was I supposed to do? That's what I'm going to get into in this video. So let's get started. How to get the good ending in Bloodstained. Alright, so the first thing you need to do after getting access to the Hall of Termination is you need to head to the Cathedral. Go to the bell tower that's to the left of the fast travel point. See, I'm in the uh, little room outside of the fast travel point. Just keep going to the left. Now, if you've got access to the Hall of Termination, then that means that you have the reflector ray. I'm not going to get into how you get the reflector ray in this video. I just assume that you've already gotten it. Basically, you have to complete the train puzzle solution thing and get access to the secret alchemy lab, and you get it there. Let's see. In this room, there is some mirrors that you can use a reflector array on that allow you to get to a higher area of the cathedral. So, once you figure out the right angle, head up. And from here, just continue on through this new higher section of the cathedral. The enemies here are a little tougher, but it's nothing you shouldn't be able to handle. Just keep on going till you get to the boss. Because to be able to fully explore the castle, you're going to need the power that she gives you. And who is this boss? It's a vampire called Bloodless. This fight is nasty. This is a tough boss. At first, you might think that there's some kind of trick to fighting them because of one of the things they do like halfway through the fight, but nope, nope, nope. They're just a regular old fight. They are very aggressive. They take a lot of hits, at least when I fought them. They have a lot of different moves and they do a lot of damage. This is a tough one. I put this up there with uh, Zengetsu, the first time you fight him. Yeah, so just keep fighting her, beat her up. She has a really nasty habit. This is the kind of like the trick that she pulls off. Halfway through the fight, she just sucks up all the blood in the room and basically completely restores her health. You might think, oh, is there something I can do to like avoid her from being able to do that? But no, there isn't. It, it's just part of the fight. She does it once and then you beat her up. Yeah, just keep hitting her and she'll eventually die. She doesn't do it again. But when you beat her, you get this power. Bloodsteel. Now, you might think to yourself, okay, that's kind of cool, but what do I do with it? Well, if you remember, there's a room in the entrance. This one right here. This is the one that's connected to the Garden of Silence, I think. It's really close to the, the entrance of the Garden of Silence, at least. It's a big blood fountain. So yeah, go back there. That's where you want to go. This is what you need to do to continue forward. This is the only place where you're able to really use this. So this is where you got to use it. It's a pretty notable room though, so... Yeah, just use it. Suck up all that blood. And the pool will drain. Now you can continue down. Just keep going down this path, 
And you'll find a new entrance to the Forbidden Underground Waterway. And here we are, the other side of the Forbidden Underground Waterway. So from here, you need to just keep on going, keep on trucking through this area, until you find a specific room. This one here. This room is noteworthy because it has these guys in it. They're called Decimas. Those guys are important. This is the only time in the game, I think, where you have to do something like this. Where you have to just kill an enemy to be able to continue past the very beginning. So you might be confused at this point. You might wonder what you're supposed to do. Because as you saw, I killed that Decima, but I didn't get anything. So what you have to do is kill the Decimas in that room. Just wanted to show off that it's connected to the fast travel point. This one right beside it. But just keep killing those guys and you get Aqua Stream. This allows you to move around underwater. It's not as good as being able to just walk around underwater, but for now it's all we got, so this is what you want. Now just continue exploring the underground waterway with this equipped. Be able to move through the water until you get to a new area. Yeah, just keep on going. And you're gonna find treasure chests all over the place, spots where you should be able to pass through if you were able to walk but you can't, so just keep on going. You can come back later. It'll take you to a new area. The Hidden Desert. Okay, so the Hidden Desert is another relatively small area. There's not a lot in it, so just keep on going. You know, get the treasures, explore the area fully. But when you get to this elevator, that means there is a boss. Go all the way to the top, and you fight Alfred. This guy throws everything he has at you. This is a chaotic battle, but it's nothing too, too difficult. As long as you have some healing items, you should be okay. So just beat up this old man, just... And I'll get you access to another item. You may have noticed when you were passing up here that there was this, this entryway right here was sealed. Now that you've beaten him, it's open. So go up here and grab this item. This is what you need to continue. This is the Deep Sinker. Yes, what a name. Anyway, with that equipped, which it's on by default, you can walk underwater. You move pretty slow, so it's kind of annoying. It's probably faster to use the Aqua Stream, but for parts like this, you're gonna need it. All right, so go back to this room. This is the specific room we need to get access to. Use the Ray Power and pass through. Remember, you can only use that Ray Power when you're standing. You can't do it while you're jumping or floating or whatever. So that's why you need this. You have to have the deep sinker to be able to pass through that room specifically. So, just keep on going till we get to another new area. This is the secret sorcery lab. There's actually uh, nothing required to continue on through here. So I'm just going to skip ahead. There's a boss, but it's not anything. It doesn't give you any powers or anything you need to be able to continue. So I'm just going to skip it. Yeah, you just pass through that area and you get to the Inferno Cave. This is an important area. This is a very dangerous area. The fire is bad. There's lava everywhere. Enemies do tons of damage. This is a bad area. Just keep on going through it though, and you'll get to this boss. This is Oribus. This guy you have to beat to be able to continue. He likes to go nuts, but he's fairly predictable. The hardest thing about him is that it's kind of hard to do damage to him. You want to use blunt weapons. Those do more damage than slashing weapons. And we're like, 
with a lot of bosses in this game, standing behind them seems to be a really good option. Beat him up. He dies. And that gets you a really good movement power, Invert. With this, you can flip around. There you go. And unsurprisingly, you need this to continue. Also, you can use this to get most of the treasures you couldn't get before in the castle. So, you might remember this room. You've probably seen this one. See those spikes? There's a spike hallway there. This is right in like that huge room, the huge vertical shaft room that's in the entrance. This is like literally the first room you see when you come into the castle. Now, to be able to get past those spikes, you need a special item. And you need inverse to be able to get it. So, let's go get that item. Where is it, you might ask? Could be anywhere? Well, think about it. What's a place where you really, really need invert? Yeah, Tower of Twin Dragons. That seems like a likely enough spot. I was just guessing when I found this. I just thought, well, that's someplace that's really high up. I'll give that a shot. Teleport there. And you want to get to the elevator. This is kind of the big thing. You want to get to the elevator. Take the elevator all the way down. Because where I'm going is the second tower. The right tower, not the left one. The left one's kind of the one you explore. The right one is the one where you fight the boss. So that's the one I'm going to. Just wait for the elevator. Yes, that's where I want to go. And if you played Symphony of the Night, then you probably remember there's a similar large hallway with spikes lining it, and you had to get a special suit of armor to be able to pass through it. Well, this works pretty much the same way. Ow. So here it is. Open this chest, and that gets you the Aegis Plate. That protects you from spike damage. With this armor equipped, spikes will do nothing to you. Just to show it off. Yep, see? Nothing. So let's go back to the entrance and climb up here. Now remember you need craft work to be able to move the Iron Maidens. Get that sucker out of the way. And with the Aegis plate equipped, just jump up and pass through. This will take you to the last major area you need to get to in order to get the good ending. So just keep on going and this takes you to the Oriental Sorcery Lab. This is another fairly large, complex area. There's a lot of stuff you can get in it, but the only thing that really matters for getting the good ending is getting to the boss. Yep, Zangetsu. So you have to fight him again. Zangetsu round two. When you beat him though, you get the Zangetsuto. I got these deadheads covered, Simon. Go for it. This is what you need to be able to break the spell that's over Gebel. Now, did you see that? Did you see in the description? It's described as a moon sunderer. So that's a big clue about what you're supposed to do. So let's go and fight Gebel. Remember to equip the Zengetsuto. Let's go after him. I'm just going to show this in its entirety because this is actually a little tricky. It's kind of a puzzle. You can screw this up.
So you just go and confront Gebel. Nothing really has changed here. Just hanging out like an erstwhile Dracula. Well, actually, he's less of a Dracula. He's more of an Alucard. Yep, yep. Same dialogue. Basically, nothing changes. At this point, you're probably a lot stronger than him. So, this is something important to keep in mind. Do not go nuts on him. You need to attack him, though. You have to wear him down a little bit before you're able to actually expose Grimmery. So just keep whacking at him. And you might notice if you fought him before that there's one thing in the environment that changes as the fight goes on. And that's the moon. So that's your big clue about what you need to do. Yeah, if you played Symphony of the Night, you might think, oh, well, I'll just wait for Grimory to appear or something. Like, she'll appear as an orb like Shaft did in Symphony of the Night. It's not quite that simple. It's a little trickier. So, just fight him until the moon changes. There it is. See that? There. With the Zengetsudo equipped, attack the moon, and Grimory will appear. At last, the Leaper Logai is mine! Alright, there's some cutscenes. I'm just going to skip all that. And now there's one last thing you need to do before you get into the end game. And that is yet to find Grimory. Now, where could she possibly run off to? Well, if you remember, there's actually another area with a red moon somewhere in the castle. That's the final thing you need to do. So with the Zengetsuto, just keep it equipped. Go and find that area, and I'll just tell you right now, it's in the Garden of Silence. Let's go there, and slash it. Just like with the Gebel fight. So I'm just going to walk over there so you know where it is specifically. But yeah, we're back in the Garden of Silence. There's the moon up there, but that's not the moon that we're looking for. I remember this room really standing out. I always thought it was really strange because, like, look at that. That's a normal-looking moon. But in that one specific room, it's super red. And it's actually, like, sitting inside the castle. So it's not this one. This one up here. There it is. So slash that sucker. There's Grimory. And there we go. That's the portal that leads to the end game. From this point on, it's just a straight shot until the end. Just have to fight through it, persevere, beat up the bosses, beat the last boss. And then you'll get the good ending. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.